Hi guys, welcome back to another lesson. Uh, so in this lesson, we're going to take a look at user registration. We're first going to create a user model. Um, and after creating the user model, we're then going to create a registration API route so we can store our user in the database. So we're going to switch straight back over to our code. So inside of our code, this is where we finished off in the last lesson connecting to the database. We are now going to create a new folder in the root of our project. And that new folder is going to be called models. We're then going to, inside of models, we're going to create a new file. Uh, models traditionally have a capital letter for their first file name, so I'm going to call it user.js with a capital U. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a user model. A user model is essentially the, um, the data that our application is expecting to store or receive when kind of referencing users from the database. <laughs> so to do this, we are first going to need to import uh, Mongoose into this file. Um, and we're going to import the schema and the model from Mongoose. So we're going to use um, curly brackets. Uh, and inside those um, curly brackets, we're going to type in schema, comma, model. I'm going to put a space either side of those brackets. And it's going to be equals require Mongoose. Um, so these curly brackets here, oops, these curly brackets here uh, mean that we're destructuring from a Mongoose. We are grabbing schema and model um, from the Mongoose package. So we're then going to create a new const, a new variable called user schema. And that is going to equal new schema. And then we're going to do a rounded brackets. We're going to open those up. And then we're going to do curly brackets. And essentially inside the user schema, we basically define, as I said earlier, what kind of data we're expecting um, to store in the database and what we need to provide um, for the user model. So our users are going to have an email. Oh, and then we need to, after doing email, we then need to do a colon and we need to open up curly brackets. Um, and with a schema, you need to define what type this uh, this um, bit of data is going to be, this property is going to be. So the type of uh, type for email is going to be a string. So we're going to store a string. And we're also going to add required colon is true. So that basically tells us that we need to provide an email. Our, our application will send an error if the email is not present when we're trying to store a user. We're then going to do password. It's going to have the exact same properties. So uh, type string required true. That's also going to be stored um, in the database. And then we are also going to provide a name. So each user is going to have a name stored against them. And that we're going to set to required true as well. At the end of these curly brackets here, we're going to do a comma. I'm going to open up some more curly brackets. I'm going to move my mouse out of the way to get rid of those pop-ups. And I'm going to add timestamps, colon, true. And all that's going to do is um, inside of our database, it's going to store what time the new uh, the um, piece of data was collected, uh, when it was stored, sorry, um, and when it is last updated and things like that. So we can basically reference um, yeah, when it was created and we can see when it was last updated. So once we've done that, uh, I'm going to put an enter there to tidy that up and then some a semicolon there. We then need to export our model. So I'm going to do const user with a capital U equals model user in, that's in um, quotes. And then we're going to use the user schema. So what we've done is created a model called user and that user uh, model uses the user schema we just defined up here. And then we need to do module.exports equals user. So we're exporting the user from this file. Right, so now that we've done that, we need to create an API route, a uh, register API route to store that user in our database or allow us to store users in the database. So what we're gonna do uh, inside server.js, we've got our routes here at the moment. That's not very clean and tidy. If we had loads of routes, we wouldn't want this file getting huge. So we're gonna make a new folder. This new folder is going to be called routes. And inside that folder, we're going to make a new file called, oh, called auth.js. So what we're going to do is we're going to define all of our auth routes inside of this file. So we're going to keep them all in one place, neat and tidy. So what I'm going to do is going, I'm going to do const express equals require express. So we're importing express. We need to um, make use of express's router. So we're going to do const router equals express dot router with a capital R and rounded brackets. And then at the end of this file, we're going to have module 
dot exports equals router. So we're going to export the, the router from this file so that we can use it inside and we can in a minute we will import it into server.js. So to begin with, we are just going to make a test route. So we're going to do instead of apt.get, we are now going to do router.get because we're in a different file. And that's root is going to be forward slash test. So when we go to the forward slash test endpoint, we're just going to return a request. We need to make use of request and response inside of a um, arrow function. And we're just going to do res.send auth root working. So what we're going to do is we're then going to just verify that um, when we import this root into server.js, this root, this file we've, we're importing is working. So inside of server.js, we are going to import that new root. I like to import the roots up with our other imports at the top. So I'm going to put import roots as a comment. And I'm going to do const auth root equals require dot slash roots. So I'm doing the folder. I'm going back to the folder and then auth. You can see my autocorrect, my autocomplete, sorry, is showing me there. So underneath this, underneath our current roots, we're going to do a app.use. So this is telling us our express root, uh, our express server to use for the current, for the root. We're going to do um, quotes slash API. So we're now going to put it, uh, we're now going to put our API roots um, with forward slash API in the front to make it tidier, to tell us, to, to tell the application that we're talking to the API. Um, and then it, our, our root's going to be called slash auth. So I'm then going to do auth root in there. So that's basically saying um, when we do a get request to API slash auth, um, it's then going to look at our auth roots um, inside of our auth file here. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to Postman and I'm going to test this. So this is a post request. I'm going to change that to a get request. We created a new root underneath API forward slash auth, forward slash test. And when I click send here, you can see auth root is working. So we have imported our route successfully and it's all working well. I'm now going to remove this test um, route we did in our files here. We don't need that anymore. That was just to test our application. And seeing as we're now putting our API on, on uh, with forward slash API in front of it, I'm gonna change our default, um, our default kind of route to slash API. So if I was to go to, back to Postman, if I do this initial request we had, you'll see that it's no longer working because I've now moved it to slash API. And you can see it's now working under the slash API route instead. Okay, so we've now got our auth route working and our file working. I'm gonna quickly uh, close others. I'm just gonna close all our other files to make it nice and neat and tidy. Um, and I'm gonna do a bit of housekeeping first. So. In general, this is completely optional, but this is what I like to do in my inside my applications. I, I like to add comments to tell me what the root is doing. So I do a forward slash, I do an at symbol, if I can find the at symbol, root, a couple of tabs, and this is a get request that is at forward slash API, forward slash auth, forward slash test. And then I do a description for that root, test the auth root, forward slash, and then I do at access. So this access tells us whether it's public or private. This would normally be public or private. In this case, this is a public route. A private route basically uh, in general means that it's uh, a route behind authorization. So you'd have to be logged in. It's a private route. Um, you can't access that if you're a general user without who's not logged in and, and, and authorized. So that's just a bit of housekeeping to define all of our routes. So I'm gonna copy this block here. I'm gonna create our new block um, and uh, we're going to create our new route for registering and storing a user in our database. So I'm going to change this to post because we're going to be making a post request and it'll be to forward slash auth forward slash register. And it's going to be the description for that is create a new user. And it will be a public route because you don't need to be logged in to register to become a new user. So it has to be public. And we're going to do router.post. So we're now going to create the route. And we're going to do forward slash register as we put in our uh, in our root up here. And we are this time instead of just doing a normal um, a normal arrow function, we are then now going to do an asynchronous arrow function. So I'm going to do async request request 
comma response inside of the random brackets. And then I'm going to open up my um, arrow function with curly braces. And then with async functions, you should put a try catch block in. This is what they're called there. It's called a try catch block. So it's what it's going to do is it's going to try the code inside of here. So try code in here. If there's an error, our catch block will return an error. Error here. And what we're going to do is we're going to console log that error so that we can see it inside of our terminal here. But we are also going to return res.status500. So the 500 code suggests an internal server error. So these are errors we're not expecting. These catch errors here, we haven't allowed for those. So we need to put inside of our catch block, it's a server error. And we're going to send the error.message because we don't really know. If, if the, our code gets to here, we don't know why we've caused an error. So this will console log the error and it will return the error on, on from our request. Okay, so inside the register route, what we're going to do here is we're going to save the user to the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new user. And to do that, we need to import the model we just created over here, this uh, user.js model here. We need to import that into our file. So const user equals require. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to roots. I need to go, sorry, I need to do double dot roots. You see my IntelliSense has now popped up telling me where that is forward slash, um, and then it's under user, uh, not root, sorry, models forward slash user. So now we're importing that file into this, uh, into our auth roots. And then what we can do inside of create new user is we can do, we can create a new, um, new user. So um, const new user equals new space user. So that's saying it's going to be a new bit of data following our user model. And inside of that, we're collecting the email. So we need to tell it what to use from our request. So we want to collect the email. The email in our request will be from request.body.email. The password will be request.body.password. And the name will be request request.body.name. After we've created our new user, we then want to save the user to the database. So what we're going to do is const saved user equals, so we're going to await new user dot save. So basically what this is going to do is it's not going to continue. It's using the await, we're going to wait till the new user is saved to the database. Then we're going to return the new user here. So return res.json saved user. Now, if you know anything about databases or you've worked with um, storing users before, you'll know that this is extremely bad practice what we're doing here. We are not, uh, we are basically telling the database to store the user's password in its raw format. We don't want to do that. We want to hide this password um, and we want to basically encrypt the password. And to do that, we're going to hash the password. So we're gonna remove this string here or we're gonna comment out this whole line because we're gonna do some work to um, obfuscate that password so that it's not stored in its raw format on the database. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close off the server, control C to do that. And I'm gonna install some new packages that allow us to hash this password. MPI, NPM space I, I'm gonna install bcrypt and bcrypt JS. Okay, once those are installed, I can start running my server again. So I'll just type in the command fully. So npm run server. So at the top of our file, we're now going to um, import const bcrypt equals require bcrypt.js. Sorry, we don't want the base um, version. We want the bcrypt.js version. So what we're going to do before we store this in, or create this new user, we need to hash the password. So to do that, we're going to do, we're going to create a const hashed password equals await bcrypt dot hash request dot body dot password. So we're going to take what the user gives us. We're going to encrypt that and we're going to salt it. Uh, we're going to use a salt length of 12 to salt the password. Um, and then what we can do 
is we can store this hash password in the in the database instead of the raw password. So we're going to replace password there with hashed password. Okay, so now we've created the route. So if we go for another, if we get, kind of go over this route again, what we're doing is we're taking the user's input, we're hashing the password they provide us so that we're not storing the raw password. Um, we are creating a new user. We're uh, taking the email from the request, we're taking the name from the request, hash password, and then we are saving it to the database. Once that's then saved to the database, we are returning it from our endpoint here. So if we open up Postman, we need to make a post request to forward slash API forward slash auth forward slash register. So that was the API we, we created. We're going to go to the body. We're going to go to the, uh, it's already selected here, but the form URL encoded um, tab on the top and we need to provide uh, a number of things so I'm just going to uh, get rid of this for now can I delete that yeah so we're first going to provide the email so in in, in practice when we build our react application we will uh, we will do this on a nice form um, inside the UI but to begin with we need to you know test this route to see that it works um, in practice it will all be done under a nice form in our react application obviously so the email I'm going to do use is test at test.com we're going to provide a name and that name is going to be Matt and then I'm going to provide it with a password which in this case is going to be one two three four five six so there you are so I've provided the following data I've got the email the name and the password so when I click send we then we've got no issues with our code we have the user returned to us so this is the user that's been stored in the database we've got the email We've got the password. You see it's in a nice hashed format. It's in, not in the raw format. You can see that here. We've got the name um, and we've got our ID and, and all of those things. So if I now go to, where do I want to go to the browser? If uh, I go to, so I'm logged into my um, MongoDB Atlas. I'm logged into my dashboard. I'm gonna go to good databases on the side. I'm gonna click on the cluster and inside the cluster on the top tabs, you see collections. Under collections, you can see users and you can see here that our user is stored in our database online. So I've noticed an issue here. We haven't got any timestamps. So we'll have a look into that. Normally there is a timestamp saying created that and um, recorded that. Uh, what have I done here? It should be not timestamp, but time stamps. See that? The auto, uh, the auto um, fill there told me that it should be timestamps and not timestamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Postman. I'm going to send through this request again. And you can see that we're now, we've now got our created at and updated at timestamps. You can obviously tell that there's also absolutely zero validation on this route at the moment. What we need to do is we need to properly validate it. We need to validate the user's input. We need to make sure they're providing a valid email. We need to make sure that we do checks on the database to check that a, a user doesn't already exist with this email because we don't want users to be able to register twice with the same email. So what we're going to do is we're going to tackle that in the next video. Um, but for now, we know that we can re write data to our database. So if I um, refresh this um, online, so I'm on, back on our uh, database on here. You can see that this is the original one where we had our timestamp set up wrong. And this is the newly created one uh, with our created at and updated at timestamps. For now, I'm going to click this delete button. We're going to just delete these users seeing as I was just trying to test to begin with. So I don't really want them stored in the database. That was just me testing the roots. You can leave them there or delete them. Um, but you, you might run into problems in the next videos if you don't delete them. Because we're now going to take a look in the next lessons at validation. So I'll leave you guys there. Thanks for watching this lesson um, and I'll be back with the next one.